Welcome to Savvy Sab's podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina Salvati. So you guys know how we do this. We start off with Q&A and then we get into today's news. So today's Q&A question is, and by the way, guys, like I just got my second shot, so I'm not feeling 100% like my savvy self. So I just ask that you bear with me, but I'm still here and we're going to get through it. All right, today's question. Was your N-word video about Kyle? All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and answer this. Um, yes, but to be fair, he's not the only one who has done this. Many of you have seen or probably have seen by now the video that I did. I posted it Saturday, I believe, about um, white leftist commentators telling their audience whether or not it's okay to use the N-word with an A or E-R at the end. And I was really... Uh, angry in that video because over the past month, I feel like here it is 2021 and I have to explain this to people why this isn't okay. Um, so that side of me that you saw is not usually how I am, but my husband always had a saying that like, she's really nice until you piss her off. Yeah. So I was very, uh, very, very not happy. Um, Yes, it was. Uh, to give you guys a little bit of a backstory, one of my subscribers had sent me that video. Um, it was the Hunter Biden video that Kyle had did. I told you guys in another video, I actually don't watch Secular Talk anymore. I haven't watched that show since actually last year. So it's been a while. I just don't watch it anymore. I'll get into the reasons about that in a minute. But to make a long story short, they asked me what I thought about it. So I was actually just you know, had the video on in the background while I was working on other things. And then there were some things that were said that really gave me pause. And I'm not going to play that video here. I think most of you have probably already seen that video. So I made a video about it while I was just standing in my kitchen. <laughs> I literally made that video very quickly, uh, posted it on Twitter, and I did not realize it was going to get the attention that it got. So a lot of people have reached out to me since that video was posted. And some of the comments that I got from people were hateful comments, of course. You're always going to have that. But the majority of the comments that I got from people was actually people thanking me, thanking me for standing up and thanking me for speaking out. Now, one thing I do want to add here is that this is not me telling you not to watch that show. This is not me telling you to cancel that person. Those of us that are commentators, we're still human and we make mistakes. I make mistakes. But here's what I will not do. Most of you know that I'm a part of Fred Hampton Leftists, along with my show that I do here. We are not in this space to tiptoe around issues. We are not in this space to be silent. And for a long time, we have noticed that there was a void in leftist commentary. And we are here to fill that void. So we're not going to be silent and quiet about these things. Now, there are some people that will. There are some people in this space, Black people, that will be silent and quiet about these issues just so they can get along to get along. I am not that way. And when I decided to do this, I said that I was gonna be open, honest, and authentic, and I'm not going to tiptoe just so that people like me. If that's what you're looking for, you might as well just watch MSNBC. Now, the reason why I decided to stop watching that show, because for me personally, I was at a point in my life where I was looking for something different. I was looking for something in leftist space that was going to talk about not just leftist issues, but leftist issues that also affected Black people in our community and in the right way. Last year, what I saw was that it seemed like to me, and if you watch my interview with Nico House, I brought this up as well, it seemed like to me that when Black issues came up, defunding the police, 
and reparations, it seemed like the message that was coming across in a lot of leftist indie media was, let's not do it because it's not popular. Or let's just, you know, let's push that to the side for now and focus on the issues that affect all of us. You can't do that. And so that's why you have people like me and FHL that are in this space. Because what we're going to tell you and what you're going to hear on here, you're not going to hear this everywhere. We're going to give you our full lived experience because as Black people, our experience is different than our white counterparts. So that's why we're here. And people ask, do I regret doing that video? No, I don't. I got to be true to myself, man. And if you're looking for someone that's not going to do that, just watch mainstream media. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just not that way. I've never been that way. So yes, that's what it was about. And to be honest with you, I think that message needed to be heard by a lot of people because there were some people that reached out to me that said, I'm really glad that you put this into perspective because for a long time, I didn't realize how this affected Black people or how this affected the Black community. I don't want to spend too much time on it because I'm looking at the clock right now and I am running short on time. I have to do a interview uh, pretty quickly, actually. So I do want to get into today's news, which is, <laughs> so Kamala Harris had an interview recently with Lester Holt and didn't go too well. Watch. Now, Harris is facing criticism from some progressives for telling potential undocumented migrants do not come to the U.S. She's also pushing back against complaints about not yet visiting the U.S.-Mexico border. Let's quickly put a button. Okay. Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, at some point, you know, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole, this whole, this whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. I'm not discounting the importance of the border. Well, All right, White House correspondent Jeremy Diamond is live from Mexico City. Jeremy, uh, does it appear that the, the administration, the vice president, is making any progress here? Uh, well, listen, uh, there certainly has been uh, have been a few deliverables so far. Yesterday in Guatemala, we heard the vice president announce this new anti-corruption task force, uh, as well as tens of millions of dollars in new U.S. investments uh, to help develop the economies uh, of the, the Northern Triangle. Today, we saw the vice president meeting uh, with uh, the Mexican president, uh, Lopez Obrador, and uh, they signed a memorandum of understanding outlining how they will help to address uh, the development of Central American countries. And, and what's interesting here is there is this increasing alignment between the U.S. and Mexico on that front, given the fact that Mexico, which has long been a transit country for migrants from Central America to the United States, now also increasingly becoming a destination country. And so therefore, Mexico and the U.S. much more aligned in terms of helping with development. In fact, the Mexican government has made calls for increasing development uh, in uh, Mexico. Now, uh, you were also talking about the politics there, and the politics are hard to avoid when you're talking about immigration, whether you're doing so in Washington or thousands of miles away in Guatemala City or here in Mexico City. City. Uh, and that is because uh, you heard the vice president urging migrants not to come to the U.S. She took flack from the far left of the party uh, with uh, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez hitting her on that. And then you, when you saw those comments where she said that she hadn't been to the border, doesn't plan to be, and pointed out that she also hasn't been to Europe, she's taking flack from the right. So this is certainly uh, an issue that has required some deft diplomacy on the vice president's part, but also uh, some walking of the political tightrope. And we're certainly continuing to see that as the vice president wraps up her visit. Yikes. <laughs> so I don't know who's prepping Kamala for her interviews, but... It was clear to me she was not prepared for this interview. For Kamala to say, well, no, I also haven't been to Europe. God, are you kidding me? This is your response? It's like, what? 
<laughs> oh my gosh, man. She was so not prepared. So not prepared for that interview. And she is getting criticism from the Biden administration and she's getting criticism from the right. So from both sides. And I don't know about you guys, but that just doesn't look good. Now, one of the things I noticed too, right after that interview, when they were talking to the correspondent, this was really interesting. Notice how he talked about the politics in Mexico. He wanted to, fo wanted to focus on that. And then he went into the fact that Kamala had mentioned recently that she told migrants not to come here. Now that is very important because for those of you that watch the town halls during the democratic primaries, Kamala Harris during her town hall, the message that she delivered about immigration when Trump was saying the same thing, Trump said, do not come here. And now she's saying that too. During her town hall, she actually said the opposite. During her town hall, Kamala Harris said, well, first we need to ask ourselves, why are they coming here? See, I remember this like it was yesterday. <laughs> I remember this so well. First, we have to ask ourselves, why are they coming here? They're coming here because they're fleeing like terror, like in their countries, which the U.S. is responsible for. That is why they're coming here. She then went on to say that they should be able to come here and seek asylum. And now the message that she is delivering is don't come here. So at this point, Kamala is doing the same thing that Trump did. What happened to they should be able to come here and seek asylum? What happened to that? Boy, that really changed, right? This is why I tell people the Biden administration, they're not that different from Trump. And I debated people about this like last year before the primaries happened. I tried to tell people back then, I was like, mm, Biden's not that different from Trump. And people got really angry with me, man. Got debates with people on Facebook about this. And people were like, how could you say they're the same? And I pull up a list of like the things that they've done, like their economic policies, not to mention Joe Biden is continuing Trump's policies. He's continuing the wealth tax. He's adding on to Trump's border wall. And now you have someone like Kamala Harris out there saying, don't come here. And she also just told everybody, well, no, I haven't been there, but I also haven't been to Europe. And she got caught in a lie in that video too. And I don't know if people really paid attention to that because at the beginning, Lester Holt said, well, have you been to the border? And she said, look, We've been to the border. We, which means also her. But then Lester Holt said, but you have not been to the border. And then she said, well, no, but I also haven't been to Europe. So she lied when she said we have been because she hadn't. You guys got to pay attention to stuff like this. I don't know. I've just, I, I, I don't know. My mom always said like, I should be a private investigator if I wasn't doing what I'm doing because I'm just nosy. <laughs> and I noticed these kinds of things, but she definitely did not do a good job with this interview, you guys. Like, this is just giving the right more ammo definitely to come down on the Biden administration. And the Biden administration was not happy with her interview. So, I again, I don't know who is coaching her for her interviews, but that was not good because it made her look like she didn't have a plan, it made her look like she was unprepared. And it also made her look a little silly to say, well, I also haven't been to Europe. That didn't make any sense. <laughs> I'm just like, what does one have to do with the other? Who comes up with this stuff, man? You had to know, like she had to have known after that interview that that was a bad interview. She had to have known. I don't know guys, but if this is who plans to run in 2024, we have huge problems. Republicans will definitely win again. Not saying that Kamala should win because I don't think she should win. I think again, the Biden administration, they are very similar to the Trump administration. Now, don't get me wrong. They're not out here tweeting the things that Trump did. They're not out here op openly being overtly racist like Trump did. 
but they're still continuing the policies and they're still being covertly racist, which is just as bad. So I don't know when Kamala's next interview is, but she might want to get someone better to coach her for that one. 